Three Red Sea data cables cut as Houthis launch more attacks. Three cables under the Red Sea that provide global internet and telecommunications have been cut as the waterway remains a target of Yemen's Houthi rebels, officials said. The Associated Press reported this. Meanwhile, a Houthi missile attack set a ship ablaze in the Gulf of Aden but caused no injuries. While global shipping has already been disrupted through the Red Sea, a crucial route for cargo and energy shipments from Asia and the Middle East to Europe, the sabotage of telecommunications lines could further escalate the months-long crisis. The cut lines include Asia Africa Europe 1, the Europe India Gateway, Seacom and TGN Gulf, Hong Kong-based HGC Global Communications said. It described the cuts as affecting 25% of the traffic flowing through the Red Sea. It described the Red Sea route as crucial for data moving from Asia to Europe and said it had begun rerouting traffic. HGC Global Communications described the Seacom TGN Gulf Line as being two separate cables when it is actually one at the area of the cut, according to Tim Strong, a sub-sea cable expert with Telegeography, a Washington-based telecommunications market research company. Responding to questions from the Associated Press, Seacom said that initial testing indicates the affected segment lies within Yemeni maritime jurisdictions in the Southern Red Sea. It said it was rerouting the traffic that it was able to change, though some services were down. Tata Communications, part of the Indian conglomerate and behind the Seacom TGN Gulf Line, told that it initiated immediate and appropriate remedial actions after the line was cut. Other firms behind those lines, which provide data to Africa, Asia and the Middle East, didn't respond to queries. Kaliningrad will become one of the main centers of the Russia-NATO war. The states of the North Atlantic Alliance will react if Russia dares to challenge the bloc aiming at Kaliningrad in the first place, thinks the Lithuanian ambassador to Sweden, Linas Linkevichas. According to him, after Sweden's NATO accession, the Baltic Sea has become an internal NATO sea. If Russia dares to challenge NATO, Kaliningrad would be neutralized first. Russia's previous false accusations that it is surrounded by NATO are now becoming a reality. Linkovichas emphasized, at the same time, the diplomat did not specify what exactly he meant by the word neutralized. Sweden actively pursued membership to ensure a collective defense strategy following in the footsteps of Finland, which joined NATO in April last year. Nevertheless, analysts have warned that Sweden, once a non-aligned Nordic country, may now face increased risks of being drawn into conflicts. Sweden's NATO membership means the abandonment of its historical policy of non-alignment and neutrality. Analysts argue that NATO's continued enlargement will reshape European security dynamics and potentially strain Russia's geopolitical position. Nicholas Locker and Heli Hortela from the Center for the New American Security expressed concerns that Moscow may perceive NATO's expansion as a threat, leading to short- and long-term challenges. Russian Defense Ministry publications warn of the security implications of NATO troops and equipment on Finnish and Swedish territory. Locker and Hortela highlighted that Russia's border with NATO will extend from the Arctic Ocean to the Baltic Sea, which will permanently alter the European security architecture and erode Russia's geopolitical position. Russia buys Starlink equipment for military use through Arab countries. Russia is purchasing Starlink satellite internet terminals manufactured by Elon Musk's SpaceX company in Arab countries. Press service of Ukraine's defense intelligence said this. Ukraine's defense intelligence reports that the aggressor state of Russia is buying communication equipment, including Starlink satellite internet terminals, in Arab countries for use in warfare, the statement said. The intelligence indicated that Russian occupiers discussed the possibility of purchasing Starlink satellite communication terminals in a recently intercepted radio message. During this conversation, a Russian occupier mentions that Arabs are supplying the full set of equipment, including wires and Wi-Fi routers, and that the cost of purchasing one Starlink terminal amounts to 200,000 rubles or approximately 2,200 US dollars. 
Earlier, Ukraine's defense intelligence confirmed that Russian occupying forces were using Starlink satellite communications systems and reported that Russia continues to engage in so-called parallel trading, purchasing Starlink through third parties. Andriy Yusov, representative of Ukraine's defense intelligence, said that Russians began to use Starlink on the front lines in a more systematic and organized manner. The invaders are betting on these devices and means. Of course, work is ongoing to eliminate this threat. We will not disclose the nature of this threat right now. The Russians claimed they did not use Starlink in combat operations as the system is not officially certified in Russia.